Conversation 1. Ringing about the job. Good evening, King's Restaurant. Uh, good evening. I'm ringing about the job. I understand you have vacant. Oh, yes. I'd like to find out a few more details, if I may. Yes, of course. Can I take your name? It's Peter Chin. OK, Peter. Well, if you want to ask about the job, and then if we're both still interested, we could arrange for you to come for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. I'm afraid I missed the advert for the job, but heard about it from a friend. That's no problem at all. What would you like to know? Well, um, what sort of work is it? Washing up? It's answering the phone. Oh, right, fine. And not waiting at table. That'd be good. And how many nights a week would it be? Well, we're really only busy at the weekend. So, two nights? Three, actually. So it would work out at 12 hours a week. That'd be fine. It wouldn't interfere with my studies. Are you at the university? Yes. First year physics student. Oh, right. Um, and because I'm not an EU national, would I need a work permit? Yes, you would. Just get your tutor to sign it. That wouldn't be a problem if I were to get the job. Um, where exactly is the restaurant? Well, we have two branches. The one we're recruiting for is in Hillsdun Road. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, how do you spell it, please? It's H I L L S D U N E Road. Mm, got that. Thanks. Is it near a bus stop? Yes. The nearest one would probably be just beside the library. Oh, yes, I know it. That'd be fine for me. And could I ask about the pay? We're offering £4.45 an hour. That's very good. My last job was £3.95 an hour. We feel it's pretty good, and we also offer some good fringe benefits. Really? Well, we give you a free dinner, so you eat well. Right. Better than hostel food. <laughs> we certainly hope so. And we also offer extra pay for working on national holidays. Oh, that's a really good perk, isn't it? Yes, we think so. And then because of the difficulties of getting public transport, if you're working after 11 o'clock, we drive you home. Oh, that's good to know. Well, we'd certainly be interested in inviting you for an interview, if you're still interested. Oh, yes, certainly. Could I just also ask what qualities you're looking for? Well, for this particular job, we want a clear voice, which you obviously do have. <laughs> Thanks. And you must be able to think quickly, you know. Well, I hope I... So, when could you come in for an interview? We're actually quite quiet tonight. Uh, sorry, I couldn't come tonight. Or tomorrow, I'm afraid. Uh, Thursday's OK. That'd be 22nd of October. Fine. After 5pm? Yes, fine. Would... Six o'clock be OK. Perfect. And could you bring along the names of two referees? Yes, that's fine. No problem. Good. I look forward to seeing you. Oh, uh, by the way, who should I ask for? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. My name is Samira Manuja. Uh, can you spell that, please? M-A-N-U-J-A. OK. I've got that. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you later on, then. Conversation 2. Study Experiences Before we start, Spiros and Hiroko, thanks for coming in today to talk about your recent study experiences, and congratulations to you both in doing so well in your first semester exams. Thank you. I'd like to discuss with you the value of the English for Academic Purposes course you did here last year before starting your university course. Uh, Spiros, if I could start with you... What parts of the program have now proved to be particularly valuable to you? Um, I think that having to do a seminar presentation really helped me. For example, a couple of weeks ago in our marketing subject, when it was my turn to give a presentation, I felt quite confident. Of course, I was still nervous, but because I had done one before, I knew what to expect. Hmm. Also, I know I was well prepared and I had practiced my timing. In fact, I think that in relation to some of the other people in my group, I did quite a good job, because my overall style was quite professional. What about you, Hiroko? Mm, 
that's interesting. In my group, I was really surprised by the way the students did their presentations. They just read their notes aloud. Can you believe that? They didn't worry about their presentation style or keeping eye contact with their audience. And I remember that these things were really stressed to us in the course here. So, how did you approach your presentation, Hiroko? Well, to speak frankly, I read my notes too. At the time, it was a relief to do it this way, but actually, when I had finished, I didn't feel any real sense of satisfaction. I didn't feel positive about the experience at all. That's a pity. You know, although I was pleased with my presentation, I am not so pleased with my actual performance right now in the tutorials. During the whole semester, I've not said anything in our tutorial discussions. Not a word. Really, Spiros? Why is that? Do the other students talk too much? It's partly that, but it's mostly because I have had no confidence to speak out. Their style of speaking is so different. It's not the style we were used to during the course. They use so many colloquialisms. They're not very polite, and sometimes there seems to be no order in their discussion. Also, they are very familiar with each other, so because they know each other's habits, they can let each other into the discussion. You're right, Spiros. I have experienced. For most of this semester, I've said absolutely nothing in tutorials. But recently, I've been trying to speak up more, and I just jump in, and I've noticed an interesting thing. I've noticed that if they thought my point was interesting or new, then the next time they actually asked for my opinion, and then it was much easier for me to be part of the discussion. Oh, that's great, Hiroko. I hope that happens for me next semester. I'll have to work hard to find some interesting points. What helped you to find these ideas? I think that one thing that helped me with this was the reading. I've had to do so much reading this semester just to help me make sense of the lectures. At first, I couldn't understand what the lectures were talking about, so I had to turn to the books and journals. Every night, I read for hours. Using the lists of references that were given, and I made pages of notes. At breakfast, I read and read my notes again. This habit has helped me to follow the ideas in the lectures, and it's also given me some ideas to use in the tutorials. But I did so much reading anyway. I don't think there's any time left over for anything extra. My reading speed is still quite slow, though I'm much better at dealing with vocabulary than I used to be. What else do you think we could add to the course program to help with this reading problem?、Mm, uh, there's not really anything because it's my problem. I remember we were given long articles to read. We didn't like that, but now I realize that reading those long articles was good preparation for the things I need to read now. Also,、uh, in class, we regularly had speed reading tasks to do, and we kept a record of our reading speed. So the teachers were encouraging us to work on that. That's true, Spiros. But what we read could have been different. Sometimes in the English class, I felt frustrated when I had to read articles about the environment or health or education, because I wanted to concentrate on my own field. But we didn't read anything about engineering, so I think I wasted some time learning vocabulary I didn't need. But surely the strategies you were taught for dealing with that vocabulary were helpful. Yes, but psychologically speaking, I would have felt much better working on reading from my own field.、Mm. What do you think, Spiros? Oh, I agree. That would have helped my confidence too, and I would have been more motivated. It was good, though, that we could work on our own topics when we wrote the research assignments. Okay, let's move on to writing now. And... Conversation three, accommodation arrangement. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I've just been accepted on a course at the university, and I'd like to try and arrange accommodation in the hall of residence. Yes, certainly.、Uh, please sit down. What I'll do is fill in a form with you to find out a little more about your preferences and so forth. Thank you. So, first of all,、um, can I take your name? It's Anu Bhat. Could you spell your name, please? Yes, A N U B H A T T. 
Thanks. And could I ask your date of birth? The 31st of March, 1972. Thank you. And where are you from? India. Oh, right. And um, what will you be studying? I'm doing a course in nursing. Right, thank you. And how long would you want to stay in Hall, do you think? Well, it'll take three years, but I'd only like to stay in Hall for two. I'd like to think about living outside for the third year. Fine. And what did you have in mind for catering? Do you want to cook for yourself or have all your meals provided? That's full board. Is there something in between? Yes, you can just have evening meal provided, which is half board. That's what I'd prefer. Yes, a lot of students uh, opt for that. Now, with that in mind, do you have any special diet, anything we should know about? Yes, I don't take red meat. No red meat. Now, thinking about the room itself, we have a number of options. Uh, you can have a single study bedroom or you can have a shared one. These are both what we call simple rooms. The other alternative is to opt for a single bedsit, which actually has more space and better facilities. Uh, there's about £20 a week difference between them. Well, actually, my grant is quite generous, and I think the bedsit sounds the best option. Lovely. I'll put you down for that, and we'll see what availability is like. Now, can I ask some other personal details which we'd like to have on record? Yes, of course. I wonder if you could let us know what your interests are. This might help us get a closer match for placing you in a particular hall. Um, well, I love the theatre. Right. And I enjoy sports, particularly badminton. Ah, that's worth knowing. Now, what we finish with on the form is really a list from you of what your priorities are in choosing a hall. And we'll do our best to take these into account. Well... The first thing is I'd prefer a hall where there are other mature students, if possible. Yes, we do have halls which tend to cater for slightly older students. Mm. Uh, and I'd prefer to be out of town. That's actually very good for you because we tend to have more vacancies in out-of-town halls. Uh, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anything else? Well, I would like somewhere with a shared area, a, a TV room, for example, or, or something like that. It's a good way to socialise. It certainly is. That's it. Now, we just need a contact telephone number for you. Oh, uh, sure, I'll just find it. Um, it's uh, double six seven five four nine. Great. So we'll be in contact with you as soon as possible. Conversation 4. Self-Access Centre Hi, Yun. As you know, I've asked you here today to discuss the future of our Self-Access Centre. We have to decide what we want to do about this very important resource for our English language students. So, can you tell me what the students think about this? Well, from the students' point of view, we would like to keep it. The majority of students say that they enjoy using it because it provides a variation on the classroom routine and they see it as a pretty major component of their course. But we would like to see some improvements to the equipment, particularly the computers. There aren't enough for one each at the moment and we always have to share. Well, yes, the teachers agree that it is a very valuable resource. But one thing we have noticed is that a lot of the students are using it to check their personal emails. We don't want to stop you students using it, but we think the computers should be used as a learning resource, not for emails. Mm. Some of us also think that we could benefit a lot more by relocating the self-access centre to the main university library building. How do you think the students would feel about that, Yun? Well, the library is big enough to incorporate the self-access centre, but it wouldn't be like a class activity anymore. Our main worry would be not being able to go to a teacher for advice. I'm sure there would be plenty of things to do, but we really need teachers to help us choose the best activities. Well, there would still be a teacher present and he or she would guide the activities of the students. We wouldn't just leave them to get on with it. Yes, but I think the students would be much happier keeping the existing set up. They really like going to the self-access centre with their teacher and staying together as a group to do activities. If we could just improve the resources and facilities, I think it would be fine. Is the cost going to be a problem? 
It's not so much the expense that I'm worried about, and we've certainly got room to do it, but it's the problem of timetabling a teacher to be in there outside class hours. If we're going to spend a lot of money on equipment and resources, we really need to make sure that everything is looked after properly. Anyway, let's make some notes to see just what needs doing to improve the centre. Now, what about the computers? I think it might be a good idea to install some new models. They would take up a lot less room, and so that would increase the workspace for textbooks and so on. That would be great. It is a bit cramped in there at times. What about other resources? Do you have a list of things that the students would like to see improved? Yes. One of the comments that students frequently make is that they find it difficult to find materials that are appropriate for their level, especially reading resources. So I think we need to label them more clearly. Well, that's easy enough. We can get that organised very quickly. Mm. In fact, I think we should review all of the study resources as some of them are looking a bit out of date. <sighs> Definitely. The CD section especially needs to be more current. I think we should get some of the ones that go with our latest course books and also make multiple copies. Good. Now, I was also thinking about some different materials that we haven't got in there at all. What do you think of the idea of introducing some workbooks? If we break them up into separate pages and laminate them, they'd be a great resource. The students could study the main course book in class and then do follow-up practice in the self-access centre. That sounds good. OK. Now, finally, we need to think about how the room is used. I'll have to talk to the teachers and make sure we can all reach some agreement on a timetable to supervise the centre after class. But we also need to think about security too, especially if we're going to invest in some new equipment. Um, what about putting in an alarm? Good idea. The other thing I'd like to do is talk to our technicians and see whether we could somehow limit the access to email. I really don't want to see that resource misused. What about if we agree to only use it before and after class? Yes, that would be fine. OK, anyway, that's great for now. We'll discuss it further when we've managed to... Conversation 5. Renting Holiday Apartments Greek Island Holidays, can I help you? Yes, I hope so. I have a friend who's just come back from Corfu and she's recommended some apartments in Aralus. She thought they might be on your list. Aralus, Aralus, let me see. Uh, can you give me the names? Yes, the first Rose Garden Apartments. I'd like to go with another friend in the last week of October. Well, we've got a lovely studio flat available at that time. I'm sure you'd enjoy the entertainment programme there too, with Greek dancing in the restaurant. And the cost for each of us? £219. That sounds very reasonable. I'm just jotting down some notes. Now, the second one she mentioned was called Blue Bay. Blue Bay. Yes. In fact, that's very popular and it has some special features. Really? The main attraction is the large swimming pool with salt water. Mm, much healthier, I understand. That's right. And it isn't far from the beach either, only 300 metres. And only around half a kilometre to some shops, so you don't have to be too energetic. Is it much more expensive than the first one? Let me just check. I think at the time you want to go, it's around £260. Uh, no, £275 to be exact. Right, I've got that. Now, there are just two more apartments to ask you about. Um, I can't read my own writing. Something to do with sun, sunshine, is it? I think you meant the sunshade apartments. They're on a mountainside. Any special features? Yes, each room has its own sun terrace and there are shared barbecue facilities. Oh, sounds lovely. Yes, it is rather well equipped. It also provides water sports. It has its own beach. There are facilities for water skiing. Any kite surfing? My friend's quite keen. Not at the hotel, but I'm sure you'll find some in Arillus. There's also satellite TV in the apartments. And how much is that one? 
four hundred and ninety pounds with two sharing. You mean two hundred and forty-five pounds each? I'm afraid not. Each person has to pay that amount, and there must be at least two in an apartment. Oh, I don't think that would be within our budget, unfortunately. And the last one sounds a bit expensive too. The grand? Actually, it's quite reasonable. It's an older style house with Greek paintings in every room and a balcony outside. Sounds nice. What are the views like? Well, there are forests all round, and they hide a supermarket just down the road, so that's very useful for all your shopping needs.、Uh, there's a disco in the area too. And the price? Three hundred and nineteen pounds at that time, but if you leave it till November, it goes down by forty percent.、Mm, too late, I'm afraid. Well, why don't I send you a brochure with full details, Miss Nash? But don't worry about that. I'm coming to Upminster soon, and I'll call and get one. I just wanted to get an idea first. Well, that's fine.、Uh, we've got plenty here when you come. If you've got a minute, could I just check a couple of points about insurance? I got one policy through the post, but I'd like to see if yours is better. Fine.、Uh, what would you like to know? Well, the one I've got has benefits, and then the maximum amount you can claim. Is that like yours? Yes, that's how most of them are. Well, the first thing is cancellation. If the holiday is cancelled on the policy I've got, you can claim eight thousand pounds. We can improve on that, Miss Nash.、Uh, for Greek island holidays, our maximum is ten thousand pounds. That's good. Of course, our holiday won't even cost one thousand pounds together. <laughs> It's still sensible to have good cover. Now, if you go to hospital, we allow six hundred pounds. Yes, mine's similar. And we also allow a relative to travel to your holiday resort. My policy just says their representative will help you. You can see there's another difference there. And what happens if you don't get on the plane? Uh, nothing, as far as I can see on this form. Don't you have a、uh, missed departure? No, I'll just jot that down. We pay up to a thousand pounds for that, depending on the reason, and we're particularly generous about loss of personal belongings, up to three thousand pounds, but not more than five hundred pounds for a single item. Then I'd better not take my laptop. Not unless you insure it separately. Okay. Thanks very much for your time. You've really been helpful. Can I get back to you? Your name is Ben Ludlow. That's L U D L O W. I'm the assistant manager here. I'll give you my number. It's O eight one two six O five four three two one six. But didn't I phone O eight one two six O five six seven two nine four? That's what I've got on the paper. That's the main switchboard. I've given you my direct line. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Conversation six: A local business. For the second in our series about locally run businesses, we meet Simon Winridge, co-founder of the hugely successful Winridge Forest Railway Park. Welcome, Simon. Now, perhaps you can begin by telling us a little bit about how it all started. Well. During the 1970s, my wife Liz and I had just acquired 80 acres of sheep farming land, and we decided to settle down and have children. Pretty soon, we had a daughter, Sarah, and a son, Duncan. The place was wonderful for the kids. They particularly loved trains, and gradually built up an enormous network of miniature railway track. I began to develop larger-scale models of locomotives, but we didn't think anything more of it until I went on a trip to a theme park near Birmingham, and decided we could do a much better job. So we set up a small one ourselves, based on the miniature railway, and we opened to the public for just a month that year, 1984, in July, our driest month, because our children said they didn't want our guests to have a miserable wet visit. <laughs> I dealt with park business, and Liz carried on with the farm work. It soon became clear that we were onto a winner. We began to extend the railway track and lay it among more interesting landscape by planting trees, which in turn attracted more wildlife. 
and by making cuttings through the rock. Uh, nowadays, we're open all year round, and we're pleased to say that Wimridge is one of the most popular visitor attractions in the area, with 50,000 visitors a year. A million and a half people have been through our doors since we opened. All these visitors mean we have had to expand our operation, and it's now a truly family concern. I'm near to retirement age, so I only concern myself with looking after the mechanical side of things, keeping the trains going. Liz now devotes all her energies to recruiting and supporting the large squadron of workers, which keep the place running smoothly. We're really pleased that, after some years away teaching, Sarah has now returned to the park and makes sure the visitors are kept fed and watered, which keeps her pretty busy, as you can imagine. <laughs> Our son Duncan has been a stalwart of the park for the last ten years, taking over from me in the area of construction. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. And his new wife, Judith, has also joined the team in charge of retail. That's becoming a tremendous growth area for us. A lot of people want to buy souvenirs. Mm -hmm. So have you finished your development of the site for the moment? Not at all. We're constantly looking for ways to offer more to our visitors. Mm -hmm. The railway remains the central feature, and there's now 1.2 kilometres of the line laid, but we'd like to lay more. Because of the geology of the area, our greatest problem is digging tunnels, but we're gradually overcoming that. We're also very pleased with a new installation of the go-kart arena, which is 120 square metres in area. Oh. Again, the problem is the geology. We had to level the mounds on the track for safety reasons. We wanted to enable 5- to 12-year-olds to use the go-karts. And the main attraction here is the Formula One kart. We've known fights to break out over who gets it. <laughs> and then, finally... To our most recent development, which is the landscape swimming pool. Conversation 7. Dissertation planning. Ah, Caroline. Come on in, sit down. Thanks. So how's the dissertation planning going? Well, Dr. Shulman, I'm still having a lot of trouble deciding on a title. Well, that's perfectly normal at this stage. And this is what your tutorials will help you to do. Right. What we'll do is jot down some points that might help you in your decision. First of all, you have chosen your general topic area, haven't you? Yes. It's the fishing industry. Oh, yes. That was one of the areas you mentioned. Now, what aspects of the course are you good at? Well, I think I'm coping well with statistics... And I'm never bored by it. Good. Anything else? Well, I found computer modelling fascinating. Mm -hmm. I have no problem following what's being taught, whereas quite a few of my classmates find it difficult. Well, that's very good. Do you think these might be areas you could bring into your dissertation? Oh, yes, if possible. It's just that I'm having difficulty thinking how I can do that. You see... I feel I don't have sufficient background information. I see. Well, do you take notes? Uh, I'm very weak at note-taking. Mm -hmm. My teachers always used to say that. Well, I think you really need to work on these weaknesses before you go any further. What do you suggest? Well, I can go through the possible strategies with you and let you decide where to go from there. OK, thanks. Well, some people find it helpful to organise peer group discussions. You know, each week a different person studies a different topic and shares it with the group. Oh, right. It really helps build confidence. Yeah. You know, having to present something to others. I can see that. The drawback is that everyone in the group seems to share the same ideas. They keep being repeated in all the dissertations. Okay. You could also try a service called Student Support. Mm -hmm. It's designed to give you a structured program over a number of weeks to develop your skills. Sounds good. Yes. Unfortunately, there are only a few places. Ah. But it's worth looking into. Yes, of course. I know I've got to work on my study skills. And then there are several study skills books you can consult. Right. They'll be a good source of reference. But the problem is... 
they are sometimes too general. Yes, that's what I've found. Other than that, uh, I would strongly advise quite simple ideas, uh, like using a card index. Well, yes, I've never done that before. Oh, it's simple, but it really works because you have to get points down in a small space. Hmm. Another thing I always advise is don't just take your notes and forget about them. Read everything three times. That'll really fix them in your mind. Yes. I can see it would take discipline, but... Well, if you establish good study skills at this stage, they'll be with you all your life. Oh, yes, I completely agree. Mm. It's just that I don't seem to be able to discipline myself. I need to talk things over. Mm, well, uh, we'll be continuing these tutorials, of course. Uh, let's arrange next month's now. Let's see. Um... I can see you virtually any time during the week starting... Uh, the 22nd of January. Um, what about the 24th? Mm. I'm free in the afternoon. Uh, sorry, I'm booked then. Mm. Uh, what about the following day? Uh, the Thursday? Yeah. I can make the morning. Fine. We'll go for the 25th then. That's great. Thanks. Conversation 8. Asking about health services. Can I help you? Yes. I've just moved to this area with my wife and children, and I'd like to know where we can all register with a doctor at a health center. Oh, OK. Uh, well, there's Dr. Green at the Harvey Clinic. We always recommend her for babies because she's very good with them and she runs a special clinic. Oh, uh, actually, my youngest child is five, so that wouldn't be any good for us. Right. Is there anywhere else I could try? Yes. The Eshkol Health Practice is the next one on my list. How do you spell that? E-S-H-C-O-L. And it's Dr Fuller who has space on his list. The clinic only opened a year ago, so the facilities are all very modern. That sounds good. Mm. And it's particularly good if you're busy during the day because they also do appointments in the evening. Mm. They're closed on Saturday, though. The only other place on the list is the health centre on Shaw Lane. You can register with Dr Gormley. Uh, that's G-O-R-M-L-E-Y. He's new there, but the centre has a very good reputation. Oh, yes. I think I know the road. That would be the best one. Thanks. Could you tell me, will all their services be free? Uh, there are usually some small charges that doctors make. Uh, let me see what it says about the Shaw Lane Centre. If you need to be vaccinated before any trips abroad, you won't have to pay for this. Ah, uh, what else? The Sports Injury Treatment Service operates on a paying basis, as does the Nutritional Therapy Service. Mm -hmm. Some health centres do offer alternative therapies like homeopathy as part of their pay-to-use service. Shaw Lane are hoping to do this soon. I think they may start with acupuncture. Oh. And finally, if you need to prove you're healthy or haven't had any serious injuries before a new employer will accept you, you can get a free fitness check up there. But you'd most likely have to pay for insurance medicals, though. OK, thanks. You might also be interested to know the centre is running a pilot scheme of talks for patients. I've got the list here. Actually, they look very interesting. What sort of things? Well, the first one's about giving up smoking. It's next week, the 25th of February at 7pm, and that's in room four. It says the talk will stress the health benefits, particularly for people with asthma or heart disease. That sounds very interesting. There's also a talk for families with children. It's on healthy eating and takes place on the 1st of March at five o'clock. Will that be at the health centre? Um, actually, it's at the primary school on Shaw Lane. I imagine they're inviting the parents of pupils there. It says here, all welcome. Hmm. I might go to that if I have time. There's a couple of other talks. One giving advice about how to avoid injuries while doing exercise. Mm -hmm. It's on the 9th of March. Oh, it's a late afternoon talk at 4.30. And it'll be in room six. It also says the talk is suitable for all ages. 
And finally, there's a talk called Stress Management, which is on the... Conversation 9. Problems in Holiday Home. Hello? Hi, it's Laura Carlton here. We've just arrived at the holiday flat, but I can't get the hot water and heating to work. Oh, right. That's easy. Don't worry. In the upstairs cupboard, you'll find the water heater. You'll see three main controls on the left at the bottom of the heater. The first one, the round one on the far left, is the most important one for the heating and hot water. It's the main control switch. Make sure it's in the on position. The switch itself doesn't light up, but the little square below will be black if the switch is off. <laughs> That's probably what's happened. It's got switched off by mistake. The middle one of these three controls, you'll see it's slightly larger than the first one, controls the radiators. If you feel cold while you're there and need the radiators on, this needs to be turned to maximum. The last of the three controls, the one on the right, is usually on about a number four setting, which for the water in the taps is usually quite hot enough. Below the heating controls in the middle is a small round plastic button. If there isn't enough water in the pipes, sometimes the heater goes out. If this happens, you'll need to press this button to reset the heater. Hold it in for about five seconds and the heater should come on again. Then there's a little square indicator under the third knob that's a kind of alarm light. It'll flash if you need to reset the heater. Oh, it sounds complicated. <laughs> I'm sure you won't have any problems with it. There should be some more instructions on the side of the heater. Call me back if you can't make it work. OK. While you're on the phone, we haven't managed to find a few things we need, like extra pillows for the beds and some washing powder. Is there any here? Pillows, uh, yes. If you look in the cupboard, the large white one upstairs, to the left of the bathroom door, there should be four or five on the top shelf. And if you want to do some washing, there's some powder for that, um, <laughs> probably by the back door. There's a kind of shelf there above the sink. In fact, I'm sure there's some there in a large blue box. You need about half a cupful for each wash. Oh, and that reminds me. The spare key to the back door is hanging on a hook on the wall by the sitting room window. Please make sure to put it back when you've used it. The previous guest lost it in the garden and I had to get another one made. And if you have any trouble with the lamps, you'll find some spare bulbs in a large cardboard box. It's on top of the washing machine with all kinds of useful things in it. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention when we last spoke. Yes? I've left you a local map, so you'll be able to find your way around easily. It shows the whole area. I put it in the top drawer of the chest under the TV in your bedroom. There's a whole file of local information in there too. Thanks. What about visiting the town? Can you give us any advice? Yes. You'll need to take the car. It's too far to walk from the flat, really. You have to pay to leave your car in all the car parks now, I'm afraid. I like the one that's by the station best, and you can walk to the town centre from there in five minutes. That's where all the best restaurants are. But if you want a takeaway, the Italian one does really good pasta and pizzas. Call 7322281 for that one, or 7666119 for the Chinese. They're both good, and they'll both deliver to the flat. As for places to visit, yes, do go and see the Railway Museum. The exhibition is small, but really good. It gets very crowded on Sundays, so I suggest you visit it on a quieter day, later in the week, but not on Thursdays, which is market day. You won't find anywhere to park, and it's also the only day of the week when they're not open. Anything else? Not for the moment. Thanks. Conversation 10. Studying abroad. Hello, Kira. How are you? Fine, thanks, Paul. How are you? Well, thanks. It's good to see you. It must be 12 months since you did our course. That's right. It's nice to come back and say hello. What course did you enroll in? 
Actually, I went straight into third year pharmacy. They credited me with two years, which probably made it more difficult for me. Hmm. On the other hand, you were lucky to be granted credits. Is that why you chose the course? Yes. And as I'd already finished a course in it in my country, I thought it would be easier if I studied something I already knew. I didn't realize you went into third year. I thought you started in first year. No wonder it was so hard. And what do you think is one of the big differences between studying at a university here and studying in your country? Well, I found it very difficult to write assignments because I wasn't familiar with that aspect of the system here. The main problem is that the lectures expect you to be critical. That made me feel really terrible. I thought, how can I possibly do it? How can I comment on someone else's research when they probably spent five years doing it? I think a lot of people who come from overseas countries have similar problems. But after a while, it became easier for me. People expect you to have problems with the process of reading and writing. But in fact, it is more a question of altering your viewpoint towards academic study. Hmm. How was the content of the lectures? Was it easy for you? I didn't really have many problems understanding lectures. The content was very similar to what I'd studied before. And what about the lecturers themselves? Are they essentially the same as lecturers in your country? Uh, well, actually, no. Here they're much easier to approach. After every lecture, you can go and ask them something you didn't understand. Or you can make an appointment and talk to them about anything in the course. Maybe you found them different because you're a more mature student now, whereas when you were studying in your country, you were younger and not so assertive. No, I don't think that's the difference. Hmm. Most of the students here do it. In my faculty, they all seem to make appointments, usually to talk about something in the course that's worrying them, but sometimes just about something that might really interest them, something they might want to specialize in. Hmm. The lecturers must set aside certain times every week when they're available for students. That's good to hear. And how was your timetable? Was it a very busy year? Oh, very, very busy. They make you work very hard. Apart from lectures, we had practical sessions in a lot of subjects. We did these in small groups. I had to go and work four hours every week in a community pharmacy. Hmm. Actually, I enjoyed this very much, meeting new people all the time. Then in second semester, we had to get experience in hospital dispensaries. So every second day, we went to one of the big hospitals and worked there. And on top of all that, we had our assignments, which took me a lot of time. Oh, I nearly forgot. Between first and second semesters, we had to work full-time for two weeks in a hospital. That does sound a very heavy year. So are you pleased now that you did it? Do you feel some sense of achievement? Yeah, I do feel much more confident, which I suppose is the most important thing. And have you got any recommendations for people who are studying from overseas? Well, I suppose they need very good English. It would be much better if they spent more time learning English before they enter the university, because you can be in big trouble if you don't understand what people are saying and you haven't got time to translate. Hmm. Uh, anything else? Well, as I said before, the biggest problem for me was lack of familiarity with the education system here. It sounds as if it was a real challenge. Congratulations, Kira. Thanks, Paul.